I was uh, born in USSR, actually in Ukraine. I'm from Ukraine, but I'm Russian. At the beginning, it was also wonderful. That's why when um, Ukraine and Russia were separating in 1991, so I was 11 years old. So when countries start falling apart, I saw discord, but I never expected that my family gonna fall apart with it too, you know. My parents were struggling in their marriage for a very long time. So it was like a cherry on top and my family just destroyed uh, from within. There was like unfaithfulness, alcoholism. They quit well, pay jobs and they uh, um, stopped taking care of us and the house. So like the house started falling apart. It's been infested with mold, cockroaches and mice. And the government turned off electricity and hot water for outstanding bills. And we started struggling in poverty, you know, trying to survive. That time I was starving. On top of that too, like it was always um, full of strangers because they they came to bring the booze and drugs. I actually started like drinking and smoking because of my environment. I was 13 and by 14, I was already like raped um, numerous times. I felt betrayed by my family, like my father didn't protect me. I had a moment that I remember when the guys were dragging me from my house and my father was sitting so drunk in the chair looking at me and he said, just take her as long as you don't bother me. And in that moment I thought, what kind of man is this? What kind of father are you? Why would you allow them to do this to me? I hated him since that moment for a very, very long time. When I thought the things couldn't get any worse, one month before my 15th birthday, I woke up with um, severe abdominal pain. And I was so confused because I realized I was in labor and actually I delivered the baby, but I didn't know I was pregnant and I didn't know who her father was. She actually died from health complication three months later and um, I buried her when I was 15 years old. So I literally carried her casket to the cemetery in my arms. And for the next 20 years, this image plagued my mind and my soul. So I started looking for more um, hard drugs to just numb my mind because like, I felt like worthless. I found um, drugs that equivalent to heroin here and that's what I started using for like next few years. I was just numb, you know. Through mutual friend I met this lady and she was uh, wealthy and she was uh, like nice to me and she invited me to her house and offered me a uh, coffee and sweets and she was and loving and kind and compassionate and actually it felt wonderful and safe that somebody cared and she offered me a job and there was no specifics just a job so i agree um eager to escape i still was like on heavy drugs so how i went through airport i'll never know i don't remember like playing right or anything i just one moment uh, or like one morning wake up here in this muslim prayer I woke up in a foreign country and I was like so shocked and confused. And then it hit me, this nice rich looking lady sold me into human trafficking. I find out that I'm in Cairo, Egypt, and I actually was like with two guys and five other Russian girls and they accompanied us around the city. Until next day, the police knock on the, uh, the door of the place that we stay in, and they arrest us all, but they actually let us go. Right after they said, these guys brought us in the middle of the uh, desert and just um, drop us off with two huge, terrifying Middle Eastern men. They were armed and I knew it, something bad gonna happen. So they actually forced us to crawl under the barbed wire to crossing into Israel illegally. 
It was so much fear and panic, but we just followed the instruction because I knew we're gonna die if, if we rebel. I actually could hear Israeli soldiers uh, on a check post. I could hear them speak. That's how close we were. And we were just going under in this tunnel. On another side, we have, um, they supposed to receive us, but because of the earlier police intervention, there was no one. So they forced us to crawl back. And next day, they they forced us into like um truck and threw the spare tires on top of us and we crossed the border that way. And that's where they sold us into different brothels. The girls who came with me, they went missing, some ended up dead and never seen again. So I've been bought by the uh, family business. So I actually have even bodyguards Very interesting because one of the um, my bodyguard in this brothel uh, actually was sharing gospel with me. And what's so interesting was about this gentleman, he's like always was, I don't know, I would say shiny. I never like met men like this in my life. Men in my life was drunk, um, angry, unstable, violent. But this man in the middle of this brothel, uh, he is just shiny. He always smiling. He always kind. He always helpful. And I'm like, okay, this is an act. You cannot be like this all the time. How can you be like that good? And the fact that he couldn't find a job anywhere else, like so he ended up in the brothel. But now, like, how like he ever see that? Because he's literally have a ministry in the brothel that brought me to Christ. I was never uh, experience talking about God the way he spoke about God. Through all this mess in his life, he still bring him praise and glory. And he keeps saying that God is faithful. And I was thinking like, wow, so many things happening and he still like, I have faith. There was a point when my grandfather actually had a heart attack. And by this time, I actually was allowed to call home. It was more than three months I was there. So after they vetted me, I know that I'm not gonna run. Like, where are I gonna run? You know, home. On my day off, uh, my boss actually let me go to Jerusalem to a prayer wall. And my bodyguard with his daughter drove me there. And that's another mind-blowing thing because now I'm Christian. Now I understand how valuable it's walk around where Jesus walk, you know, to put my hands on the wall that where Jesus pray. And it's so cool that I came there from the brothel. I was like drugalic, alcoholic, a prostitute. I end up praying to God for my grandfather alive. And now I understand that the Holy Spirit met me there. It was such an amazing encounter with God. I knew that my grandfather gonna be okay. I knew that God gonna show up. But what happened is right before I put my hands like on that wall, I kid you not, I was like overwhelmed by grief. I knew that I'm not worthy to ask God about anything. I knew that the people like me don't deserve mercy, but I wanna save my grandpa. And I was praying for him. I'm like, God, if you there, if you exist, you help him. And then I have this encounter and I was so grateful to thinking like, wow, that God answered my prayer. He heard me. And I do believe that's what triggered me. I want to leave. I want to leave. And honestly, you would no, never leave this kind of situation in life unless you be, have been rescued. Again, by the grace of God, almost two years later, they actually let me go and I was able to go home. I thought I'm gonna start a new life. I thought I'm gonna put everything like behind me because I was able to save up some money. But one of my other bodyguard um, stole all my possession that I accumulate. So I end up coming home like betrayed again. I had like one bracelet, like gold bracelet. I took it out and I went and I found the drug dealer and I was like on heroin again. 
I just chose to sell myself again. This time they decided to send me to Canada instead of Israel, but I was like, I don't care anywhere. Because they didn't want us to be deported, they give like all my documents to immigration. And it's triggered me because like in Israel, I was illegal, so like government didn't know that I was there. And now I'm thinking like, okay, so now like I have a paper trail. Okay, that's, that's interesting. Somebody told me that here in Canada, you have rights. And it just blew me away. I'm like, I have rights, I have human rights. Like for you, maybe it's funny, but it was almost like um, a revelation for me. So like government have my documents, they know that I'm here. I just made a bold move and I ran away. I apply for a government credit school for a cosmetology course. When I went to hair school, I met this boy and ended up his um, pastor son. So I ended up in the middle of the Christian family. And that's how God got into my life back. And then one day I just heard the message of salvation. And I kid you not, I do believe it's supernatural Christ power open the eyes of my heart because I understood like message of salvation and when I give my life to Christ like I remember that that night I was crying so much I was so overwhelmed but when I prayed the prayer of salvation I thought like I'm gonna float I felt like this like huge burden was like lifted from my shoulder and I knew hundred percent that I've been forgiven uh, that Christ died for me, that he never leave me, never forsake me, never give up on me, and that I belong to his family. I got baptized, like I think five or six months later, I got baptized and I led four family members to Christ back home. And one of them was my father. If it wasn't for Jesus, I would probably be dead of overdose. I heard God spoke to me clearly to write a book about miracles of God in my life. But the fact that through him, through this manuscript, I was able to reconcile and with my past and with my parents, it's definitely brought me like another level of healing for me. So it's so interesting. I was thinking like, I wanna be obedient. I wanna help someone. If somebody like hear my story or read my story and they can think, wow, if God saved her life, I want to give him this chance as well.